everybody, this is Andrea Tooley, and I have a special guest here for you today. This is my really good friend, Brian, uh, so I'll let That's... him introduce himself. My name is Brian, and uh, like Andrew said, I'm one of the really good friends from college. That's right. So uh, I think Brian and I have a lot of really cool things to talk with you guys about today. Um, and so, Brian, why don't you just start by telling us what you do? All right. Um, so currently, I am an orthodontics resident um, living in Denver, Colorado, um, at University of Colorado. That's where I'm doing our residency. Um, so with orthodontics, I'm a dentist. I graduated in May from dental school at Indiana University, where Andrea also went for medical school. Um, and my residency brought me out here to Colorado. That's awesome. So you went to dental school, and now you're doing residency. Yeah, so as a lot of you guys have heard through Andrea's blog, um, and some of you may have been looking into doing medical school, or you might not really know what you want to do, um, the path to going into dentistry is very much the same. You know, back when I was in high school, I knew that I was good at science, and people who are good at science kind of fall into, you know, a lot of times doing medical school or thinking they want to do something um, in that area of studies, um, and that's kind of where I was at. I thought for a while I wanted to go to a medical school. Um, fortunately for me, my mother... Um, as a dental hygienist, so I was kind of in the dental field a little bit through her, and so started looking into dental school. Um, so when I went to college, I knew I wanted to go to dental school. So Andrea was one of the, the key people that really helped me get to dental school, and I think we helped each other. And um, I know we're all trying to figure out, you know, what can you do to get into medical school or dental school or whatever it might be. And one of the things that I know really helped Andrea and I was having someone to, to lean on and kind of help you get through those hard classes. So I went to um, Butler, did four years. I majored in chemistry and Spanish, um, then did all the prereqs and took the, the standardized tests for dental school, which is called the DAT. It's very similar to the MCAT um, with a few differences. And then I went to dental school. I did four-year dental school, um, graduated from dental school in May. Um, in my third year and leading into my fourth year, I uh, applied for and got accepted to an orthodontics residency. So then I'll go for two and a half more years here at um, University of Colorado, and at the end of it, I'll be an orthodontist, so I'll do braces all day long. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, um, how did you know you wanted to do dentistry? Because kind of like you said, with people like us, we knew we liked science. I knew I wanted to be a doctor, but I didn't know anything about other careers like physician assistant or pharmacist. I didn't know anything about dentistry. So how did, besides your mom being a right. hygienist, what else? Yeah, you know, I think one of the common themes of people in the medical field is that wanting to help people. Um, you know, when you're a healthcare provider, you're a doctor, or whatever kind of doctor you are, or you're a nurse, or, uh, you know, a PA, whatever it might be, you have that desire to work with people and to heal people in one way or another. So I think that's something that unites us all as healthcare professionals. However, there's a lot more that goes into that that you obviously know a ton about, Andrea, and your readers hopefully know a lot more now. Um that goes into deciding what you're going to do for a job because this is a job and you have to think about it that way as sometimes. I know it's one of those things you don't like to think about, um, but it is, you know, it's a job and you have to think about what's going to make me happy and what, you know, what am I going to be doing for my nine to five or, you know, your five to five, 24 hours a day job that a lot of this ends up being, um, that's going to make me happy. And so dentistry, you know, I got to be a doctor which was important to me. I, I, I wanted that. Um, I got to work with patients. I had the opportunity to do procedures um, and have that relationship with my patient. Um, but with dentistry, it's a little different than it is with a lot of things with medicine. Um, one thing, and this maybe sounds funny, maybe not, but for me, my patients don't die. And that was something that, you know, it really was. That was a big thing for me is that I don't know how I would deal with that. And luckily, for most dentists, crossing my fingers, um, you don't have to deal with that, you know, and, and that was something that was important to me. Maybe not, like, the one thing that brought me into dentistry, but when I look at my, like, list of things, that was something that was important to me. Another thing for me personally um, that I wanted was I wanted to have my own private practice someday. So in dentistry, most dentists and most specialists, um, and it's getting different, but generally speaking run their own private practice. As, as you probably know, Andrew, from your experience, you know, going to the dentist as a child and now, you know, you go to the office and there's, you know, I'm Dr. Rochford. You go to Dr. Rochford's office and he has his staff and I'll kind of run the show. I enjoy that business aspect of it and I'll enjoy having the staff and, and running things. When you're a physician, a lot of times you're working in the hospital and, and you're, you know, 
a soldier in this huge hospital, you know, running the hospital, that's a big difference than running, you know, a, a private practice in dentistry. So that was something that also drew me kind of down this path towards dentistry. Great. Thanks. Okay, and then you said that you majored in chemistry and Spanish, and I've talked a lot about how I think Spanish is like the best pre-med or pre-health major. Um, what was that like for you? Why did you double major? Was it hard? Would you do it again? You know, looking back on it, it was extremely strategic, but it didn't really, it didn't mean for it to be as strategic as it ended up actually being. Um, I know, Andrea, you and I actually... Adrian and I, for all you out there watching this video, we studied abroad together the same semester and actually had the opportunity to meet up in Barcelona. I was in Spain and she was in um, the UK and we were able to meet up, which is really cool. Um, but I knew that one of the experiences I wanted to have in college was studying abroad. And I'd taken Spanish all throughout high school as, you know, everyone else in the, you know, everyone else has practically. And I thought, okay, I wanted to go to a Spanish speaking country and I knew I wanted to do dentistry. So I thought it would be very useful for me to be able to use Spanish in my everyday life practicing with patients. Right. Right. So I'm like, okay, great. I went to study abroad. So I looked at different study abroad programs at Butler and long story short, with the amount of classes that I needed to take in Spanish to make me eligible to do this study abroad program, you know, it was it was uh, a bunch of classes my freshman year, some classes my sophomore year, and then I studied abroad that first semester, junior year. Mm -hmm. And that whole semester, I know, Andrew, you were taking English courses right. when you were in, right. in the UK. I took all Spanish courses. So it was a whole semester of just Spanish courses. Right. So when I was done with that semester... I didn't need that many more classes to have a major, and that's kind of how I fell into actually majoring in Spanish. Okay. I, I didn't necessarily plan it that way, but it worked out really well. Chemistry, um, the same thing. I, I didn't love chemistry. I don't love chemistry. It was a necessary evil, and I, I know one of the things that Andrew probably talks about a lot is, you know, there's a lot of things you just kind of got to suck up and do, and chemistry courses and biology courses, really tough courses, are one of those things. Yeah. And there were just so many of those courses that I needed to have anyways for the prereqs for dentist, dental school yeah. um, that I decided to go with that. And actually, I started off as a biology major. I think our sophomore year, Andrew, I think we are probably in this together, yeah. we took yeah. a zoology course, which is just strictly memorizing. Just memorizing, memorizing, memorizing. Like, I thought it was pretty terrible. And the following semester was going to be botany, which was pretty much the same course, but for plants. And that sounded like the worst form of torture I could ever imagine. And that is when I decided to drop my biology major and pick up chemistry. Yep. Yep. And I've talked about the same thing. I was a bio major too and thought, there's no way I can do this. No way. No. Nope. So, and then how has the Spanish come into play for you in dental school? Right. So, uh, took the Spanish courses. As anyone who's taking Spanish courses right now, classroom you know, of any foreign language, uh, going from the classroom to actually living abroad, immersed in the culture is very, very different. And if you really want to learn a language, you have to live abroad. I mean, I don't care how good you are. I got A's in all my Spanish classes. It doesn't matter how good you are in those classes. You need to really immerse yourself in the culture. And so I did that. Um, I, I was abroad in Spain for that semester. I actually spent the next summer in Honduras because I didn't really do a good enough job immersing myself. I didn't think my Spanish was good enough. And then I came back from Honduras, and I was pretty much out of my major, and I didn't use my Spanish. And it was kind of a womp womp, where I was like, all right, well, I have the Spanish now, I'm not using it. So, you know, fast forward to my first years of dental school, which, again, are very much like medical school. You're in the classroom, it is didactic stuff, you're learning about the whole body, every system, every disease, you know, you're, I'm sitting here thinking, wait a second, I'm a dentist, like, what, why do I need to know this stuff? But you do, and again, still not using my Spanish. It yep. wasn't until my third year of dental school, which is for medicine, that's when you start your rotations yeah. for dentistry. Yeah. It's the same, similar thing, but we start working in the clinic with patients acting as their dentist, which is very cool. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I started getting all these Spanish-speaking patients assigned to me. And once the word kind of spread that I was one of the five people in my whole class of 105 mm -hmm. that could speak Spanish, all the patients getting assigned to me were Spanish-speaking patients. And so my Spanish just picked right back up, and it's really been going strong ever since then. Um, we have a really large Spanish-speaking population here in the Denver area, oh. and so it's been the same thing here for my residency. It's been really nice where most of the kids I'm treating speak English, but when I do my consultations with their parents, um, I'm using my Spanish. So it's been really, really nice. Great. Great. That's so good. Okay. Okay, and... Um I think a lot of people watching are pre-med either in high school or in college, and I talk a lot about studying, and I know you and I studied together so much, and we are just studying pros, 
Yeah. So if, why don't you touch on like just what you would recommend and how you got through it and stuff like that. Yeah. So again, I was very lucky that pre-med courses and pre-dentistry courses are very, very similar. So Andrea and I met each other right at the beginning of freshman year. And for the next four years, we were going to have very similar classes. And we worked well together. Andrea, um, and I'm not trying to you know make her feel good about herself, but Andrea is smarter than I am. I was more the person that she was teaching a lot of the stuff to, but it worked well for each other because Andrea would, would learn it pretty well, but then she would teach it to me. And through that process yeah. would kind of second guess, do I really know this? I think I was the one that desperately needed Andrea. So I was like, Andrea, we have to go to the library right now because you have to help me figure out what is going on in biochemistry, you know, like, or whatever class it might've been. So we spent hours and hours and hours together trying to get through all of this. And, and it really worked well for us. I was in a very similar situation in dental school where the, the roles were kind of reversed, where I was, you know, the one who kind of knew the information a little better. And a good friend of mine in dental school was the person that needed me to kind of help her um, kind of master it a little, a little better. And the same thing, it worked really well for us, you know, um, where I was in teaching the material. But again, it, it makes you think, do I actually know this material? And I think, you know, generally speaking, if you can teach the material to someone else, right. you know it pretty right. well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that just worked Really, really well. Also, someone that you can have fun with is really helpful because you're going to be miserable. Like Andrea said, you know, you're giving up going out to the parties and, and, and yeah. doing different social things. So if, at least if you're trapped in a library or in a you know, classroom studying all weekend, you can at least be with someone that you enjoy their company and you can take breaks. I know Andrea and I would take YouTube breaks where we would just watch stupid YouTube videos and it was just yeah. relatively yeah. fun. You know, it sounds like Nerdoville, which it was. Um, but that's how you get through it. And if you can't, you know, figure out a way to get through it, you're never going to get through it because it's a long road. Yep. hundred percent. And you are like the poster child of having work-life balance and being able to fit in, like socializing with your friends and having fun. How did you do that? How did you decide like when to go out and when to stay in? Yeah, I think being really organized with your time is a huge thing. Um, knowing when to say yes and when to say no, um, you can't say yes to everything, you know, but it's always been really important to me to say yes to certain things, you know, um, let's say a Friday night, you know, I might want to go to a party, but you know, if I was in college, I'm not gonna be getting wild and crazy. I'll go to the party for a little while and I'll leave at midnight because I need, I, I know I need to go to bed because I have to wake up the next morning and I can kind of have my cake and eat it too a little bit. Yeah. Um, seeing people kind of kept me sane. So I would make sure to, you know, go out of my way to see people or have coffee breaks with other people or wherever that might be, because it gets really easy to just isolate yourself and just be thinking, I have to study, 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 study. And you have to break that up or else again, like I said, you're going to burn out and you're going to go insane. Another thing I know that Andrew's told you all is how it never ends. You know, you think, oh, I'm going to go to do really well in high school and then I'll go to college and then it ends. Or I'm going to go to med school and then it ends. It doesn't end. So you have to figure out a way to balance things so you don't burn out. Because yeah. if you burn out, it's, you're not going to enjoy what you're working so hard to do. Yeah. And for everybody watching, Brian is so good at keeping contact with his friends and having fun. And I tend to do what he said, which I'm like, study, study, study. And I feel isolated and alone. So it's good to have people who help you remember to kind of stay normal through all of this. And you also have a great relationship. You're married and you do lots of stuff with your wife. So you have right. a great work balance there. Yeah. And you know, for people in relationships, it's hard. It really is. Cause like we were saying, especially when you, you get to that medical school or dental school or PA school, it goes to a whole nother level. You know, you thought you were working hard in college and you don't even know yet. And so it can be really hard in relationships. And so staying really focused and really organized with your time is super important. I mean, that's one of the things I struggle with is I tend to be very inefficient with my studying. So something that will take one person an hour will take me three or four hours to get done the exact same amount. Figuring out how to minimize that waste of time is really important. So you have time with your loved ones. Again, if it's a significant other or your friends or family, whoever it might be, you got to kind of figure out what works best for you and really try to stay organized. And it's hard. And if you're not good about staying organized, find someone who is and figure out how you can help them and make this a good relationship for both of you. Um, you never want to be needy and feel like you're just, you know, you know, sucking the life out of someone else. But, um, Using other people and help, helping them and having them help you really was a big part of helping me get to where I am now. Yeah. And you had 
great support. Everybody, for those who don't know, Brian is married to another college friend of mine who also has a blog, Tara. Brian, why don't you give a plug for Tara's blog? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, my wife um, is a fellow blogger with Andrea. Her blog is called Treble in the Kitchen. Um, it is not so science heavy, but definitely um, healthy living and fitness. And so I'm uh, very um, in the know with the whole blogging world and what Andrea does every day. <laughs> yeah. Tara is amazing, and her blog is awesome for recipes and workouts. And she put up with Brian through dental school. And so, in terms of making a relationship work, she knows how to do it. Yeah, and it's been good, you know. Coming up to Colorado, Tara and I are both from Indiana, um, and so we made a huge decision as a couple to move across the country and, and you know, embark on this new adventure together, and it really was a, a team effort. You know, when I was even looking into residency programs, one of the big things was, like, okay, if I'm making my wife move across the country, where is she going to be happy? What What is she going to be able to do? Where is she going to be able to live? So that was a big factor in what schools I applied to. And I applied to schools in every corner of the country. Um, and we're very lucky. We feel very lucky to have landed in Denver. Um, but it, it was a big deal. And, and I feel very fortunate that she's really enjoying it here. And she's met good friends and stuff. For all of you out there, I just started my residency in August. So I've only been out here a few months. So kind of a similar situation where Andrea was in where we were, you know, born and bred in Indiana. And now we're out here, you know, far, far away from home. So it's been a, a very big change, but it's been really good. Well, everybody, thanks for watching. We'll have more videos like this with more different professions besides dentistry. Um, and thanks so much. That was that was just awesome. All right. Bye, everybody. Yeah. yeah.